Hello. Good morning. How y'all doing? Hello. Hey, Latasha. Holistic homebody. Hello. San San Triune. Supernardo. What's up, guys? TC Wright. Jersey. Tammy. Andrew. Joe. Hi, everybody. Thanks for jumping in and joining me on today's Walk Talk. Five lies about once saved, always saved. While you guys are getting loaded up here, be sure to, good morning. Be sure to check in where, let me know where you're checking in from. Hello, I'm in Missouri too. Thanks for stopping out, hi, stopping by, hi. <laughs> good morning, God bless you too. All right, guys, before I get into today's walk talk, five lies about once saved, always saved. Just in case you're new to my ministry, my name's Matt. Thanks so much for following my account. Um, I am a Christian author. I've written seven books. All my books are available on Amazon in paperback, Kindle, and hardcover. Check them out if you get some time. Um, if you've read any of my books, please go back. Leave me a quick review. Those are greatly encouraging to me. What's up, Nathan? Love you too, buddy. You guys got to check out the religion business coming out soon. Um, it's going to be an awesome documentary about tithing and the church system and how it is set up. Um, but in case, uh, just in case you're joining me, if you've read any of my books, please go back to Amazon. Leave me a quick review. I am working on another book. <laughs> I get asked that quite a bit, but I don't really talk about it because I don't like to put any timeline on my books, but I do have something in store. <laughs> um, I also have a podcast. I'm recording the latest episode live on Instagram. This is my podcast. And uh, the name of my podcast is Walk Talks with Matt McMillan. If you are listening on the podcast, please pause it, leave me a review, come on back. And if you're listening on the podcast, of course, if I'm doing this live, you can't do that. <laughs> it's got to be in the future. So if you're listening, future person, <laughs> pause it, leave me a review, come on back. And while you have paused the podcast, go ahead and sign up for my free daily devotional. And if anybody else wants to sign up for my free daily devotional, go to my website, go to the free newsletter tab, and just put in your name and email address, and I'll send you a daily devotional once a day. I'm also on YouTube. Now, my YouTube channel, I've got it optimized by keywords, so if there's anything that you're struggling with, maybe you keep hearing something, and you're like, uh, that doesn't really sit right with me. It could be the Holy Spirit within you saying, hey... It's better than that. <laughs> so I might be able to help you out. Go to my YouTube channel, Matt McMillan Ministries, and just type in any particular Bible verse topic, something that you're struggling with. Maybe there's an issue that you're having at church and your family. Check out my YouTube channel. I do get some messages sometimes that people are binging my YouTube videos and my podcast. That's very encouraging to me. So um, maybe you want to renew your mind to some new things. Be sure to check those out. Uh, what else? Oh, go to my website and check out my topics page. I have a ton of free resources on my website. Um, if there's a particular topic you're thinking of, you can go to my topics page. I spent months and months and months coming up with the topics page, all the different topics, everything that everybody typically asks me about. So there's a ton of topics. So you can search keyword or topic, and I think I can help you out. All right. So what else? Oh, if you want to contact me, please don't message me on social media. I typically do not interact with those. I don't mind interacting with you, but don't do it on social media. Go to my website. Go to the contact page. I'll be glad to interact with you there. So let's get to today's Walk Talk. Five lies about once saved, always saved. Oh, what's he gonna say? Oh, I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> Um, you know, I have people who follow my account just to pick me apart. I welcome that. <laughs> I'm pretty secure in what I believe, so you're never going to change my mind about once saved, always saved. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know what else to tell you. So hang out, stitch me, make YouTube videos of me. That's fine, but 
I'm going to stick to what I already believe about once saved, always saved. I used to not think the op I used to not think this. I thought the opposite until I studied the scriptures myself. You know, so often we just believe what we're hand fed when it comes to so many things in the box church. You know, whether it's tithing, once saved, always saved, you know, women are less than men or, you know, there's Christian classes, whatever it is, you, you could just believe it. But if you go to the scriptures, you peel back everything you've been taught by daddy or granddaddy. Um, also, when I say box church, because I get that question sometimes, what are you talking about box church? I am talking about your run of the mill, dime a dozen, man-made, structural, traditional churches that you see everywhere. <laughs> The stuff that's passed down and then passed down. And people think because it's old, it's true. Well, Judaism was around 1,500 years before Christ came. So if we're basing truth on age, Christ is not the Messiah. See it? So we don't base anything on age for truth. We base it on the gospel. And the gospel has been the same from the garden. Yeah, <laughs> it's been the same since the garden. So I'm going to talk about that today. Um, so before I get into these five lies about once saved, always saved, um, I'm going to tell you what the five are. And I've got a bonus lie because I got six lies. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you what they are. And then we're going to dive into all five. Okay, so lie number one about once saved, always saved. If you don't stop sinning, you're not saved. That's number one. Lie number two. If you don't go to church, read your Bible, and have quiet time, you're not saved any longer. Okay? <laughs> Lie number three. If you're a lukewarm Christian, God will spit you out, and you're not saved any longer. Lie number four, people who sin less than you or not as bad, stay saved. Okay. And then lie number five, revelation says God will blot you out of the book of life. So once saved, always saved is not true. Okay. So there's the five and I got a bonus lie. You got to stick around for that one. <laughs> so this is really six lies about once saved, always saved, but that doesn't have that little round number to it. <laughs> All right. So lie number one, if you don't stop sitting, you're not saved. So I just want you to just repeat that to yourself. If I don't stop sinning, I'm not saved. Some people believe that. Here, here's how that mentality goes. That would mean you're only saved until your next sin. It sounds pretty neurotic, doesn't it? <laughs> now, when you first hear this, you're like, oh, he's telling people to sin. And of course, that's where the Pharisees wanted to go to <laughs> with every single word coming from Christ about complete forgiveness and life in him. You can't tell people that, Matt, because they will sin. Well, the Bible actually teaches us the opposite of that. So what I'm telling you right now is called grace. And Paul told Titus, it is the grace of God that teaches you how to live an upright, holy, self-controlled life. Not threatening your salvation. So the box church will threaten your salvation to try to get you in line. Okay, so if once saved, always saved was not true then, yeah, next time you sin, you're not saved any longer. You, you're, so let's, let's do the opposite of that. You could literally sin every second of the day until the day you die, you stay saved. Oh, McMillan, I knew it. That's why I tuned in. I was going to prove you wrong. Okay. <laughs> I know it's coming. Now here's what's happening. So when I say that, I'm making a much bigger deal of the blood of Jesus. I'm making a much bigger deal of what Christ accomplished above your sins, okay? The box church doesn't do that. 
Okay, they categorize sins from bad to worse, but God won't have that. The box church will have that. Tradition of men will have that because they want to compare you to them. Now, when you go to the scriptures, what does the Bible say the wages of sin is? Romans 6, 23 says death. Okay, so every single time you sin, a death would be required. Every single time the person who says once saved, always saved is not true. Every single time they sin, a death would be required. So before the cross, it was the death of an animal. Okay. <laughs> After the cross, that system has been set aside. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 18 says, because it is weak and useless. Plus, if you weren't Jewish, you couldn't even follow that. I'm not Jewish. But let's just say you are Jewish. <laughs> okay. That system is still set aside because there's a better system. A once for all death. Where am I going with this? <laughs> Jesus. Okay. The cross. So Christ died once for all. Okay, so the wages of sin is death, animal blood before the cross, Christ's blood after the cross. How often is Christ shedding his blood? He'll never do it again. Okay, so you have no way to receive more death for your sins. Making sense? The box church doesn't make a big deal of the cross. The box church doesn't make a big deal of what Christ accomplished because they want to say that you are sinning worse than them or their sins are not that bad. So here's what's happening. They are downplaying the wages. If they taught the true wages of every single sin from gossip to murder, Romans chapter one, but he lists the full gamut gossip. You gossip, you're gossiping death. Bitterness, malice, murder, sexual sins, death, 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 death. So we don't get to categorize sins. <laughs> Paul, even in Romans chapter 14, he even said, if this doesn't make it any more clear, I don't know what, what will. Okay, now get this. <laughs> Anything that's not of faith is sin. The box church won't teach you that. They say, this is worse. These are seven deadly. These are bad. These are bad. And then they'll go back into the Judaic scriptures and they will pull out categor categorization. I had to go to the temple. Blood from an animal. Death. Okay. <laughs> then we got Jesus. Will Jesus die again for any more of your wages? To, or to give you what you need to pay for your sin? No. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26 says, he would have to die repeatedly from the foundation of the world if this were not true. Death, sin, death, sin, death, sin, death, sin, death, on and on and on and on and on and on. It's never going to happen. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 says, after providing purifications for sins, he sat down. Okay? So if somebody wants to say, if you don't stop sinning, you're no longer saved. They're downplaying Romans 6.23, the first half, and they're ignoring the second half. Wages of sin is death, but he says, doesn't stop there. But the, fr sorry, having connection problems here with the cell towers recently. So I don't know where I got cut off there, but <laughs> Paul contrasts the wages of sin in Romans 6.23 to life. So the wages of sin is death. It's not you no longer lose. It's not you're no longer saved. It's death. Sin, death. Gossiping, death. Triangulating, death. <laughs> Gaslighting, death. Cursing, whatever you want to fill in the blank. <laughs> death. Okay, but then he continues. But the free gift of God. Let me slow down for this. But, so he's got the but, <laughs> the wages of sin is death, but the 
free, free gift of God. Gift. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So if somebody says once saved, always saved is not true because you're sinning. They are downplaying the wages and ignoring the free gift. Or they're ignoring the wages. Because they think that they are sinning not as bad as you. Or not as often. But no, 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 no. <laughs> we don't get to do that. One sin. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm cleansing your conscience of your sinning. And I'm trying to build you up in your righteousness. This is the ministry of the new covenant. Complete reconciliation with our creator because of what Christ has done. So you have to deal with... Once saved, always saved. You don't have to deal with, if I'm sinning, I'm going to lose my salvation. Okay? Because you're going to sin. Okay? And I know you. if you're new to my ministry, you're probably thinking of Hebrews 10.26. I've done full walk talks on that. So Hebrews 10.26 is about Hebrews 9 and 10. Don't just read Hebrews 10.26. Read Hebrews 9 and 10 together. And if you're just going to read Hebrews 10.26, read 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. This is describing the unbelievers who were downplaying the free gift. <laughs> and they were going to the temple. These are unbelievers. So they're going to the temple in order to receive forgiveness through animal blood sacrifices. There's no forgiveness of sins left at the temple. That's why he's saying it. There remains no sacrifice for sins. They were also treating the new covenant as unholy. What's the new covenant? Every time I get interrupted with my cell, to cell tower issues here, I'm going to have to repeat myself. Because <laughs> when I proof listen to this, it cuts off a large chunk. So I don't know where I'm at. But Hebrews 10.26 is not about a Christian deliberately sinning, trampling on the Son of God. It's about an unbeliever who was deliberately sinning according to the 613 commandments, saying, all I got to do is go to the temple. I don't believe in this, carpenter. <laughs> Once for all forgiveness, psh, no way, I'm going to the Day of Atonement. See it? This is not you. <laughs> You're not a Hebrew person. If you are a Hebrew person, the temple's gone. You have no way to receive forgiveness. This is why they want the third temple to be built. So you had the first temple built by Solomon. Before that, it was a tent. Then you had Solomon. That temple was destroyed by the Babylonians. You had the temple during Jesus' time. That temple was destroyed by the Romans in AD 70. There's no temple. So if you want to say Hebrews 10, 26 is still in effect for today, you got to be Hebrew. There's got to be a temple. That, that's why, this is why they want the third temple built, so they can start this animal sacrifice system again. Right now, they're in a state of limbo. They have no way to be forgiven. So they wail at an old wall, begging God to build another temple. Send the right Messiah. We don't like this carpenter. <laughs> All right. All right, let's go on to number two, the second lie about once saved, always saved. If you don't go to church, read your Bible, and have quiet time, you're not saved any longer. Okay, so where do we see this anywhere in the scriptures? Nowhere. Is there a connotation of it? Nowhere. It's not there. So this is what we call man-made tradition. Because when I just said that, it was probably was like, eh, got your conscience a little, oh, I was taught different. You got to go to church. <laughs> got to read your Bible. Got to have your quiet time. Don't get, got to get up early. Got to have your quiet time. Read your Bible. Have your devotional. You know, and you could also be thinking that I'm saying these things are bad. <laughs> I'm not saying they're bad. Anything that you do that is not of faith is sin. So if you're going to church, it's not of faith. You're sinning, but you're still forgiven. If you're reading your Bible and it's not done of faith, you're sinning, but it's still forgiven. If you think you're having a quiet time, <laughs> it's not done of faith. You're sinning, still forgiven. Okay? All of those things are not good or bad. They're not moral or immoral. They are amoral. <laughs> okay? My point here is you don't do those things to stay saved. You know, when we go to the Bible, if we look at the Pharisees <laughs> and the lost sheep of Israel, which were the group who Moses freed from slavery in Egypt, they set up the old covenant. 
they were still unbelievers because they were lost sheep of Israel. What did they do? They went to a building. <laughs> what did Jesus say he was going to do that building? It's going to be destroyed. Okay. So they weren't maintaining their, maintaining their salvation by going to a building. So we don't do that today by going to a building. Okay. They read their scriptures. You know, if you want to say you got to read your Bible or else you're not saved any longer. Well, how are you reading your Bible? Are you reading it based on man-made tradition? Or are you reading it based on the gospel? Because if you're reading it based on man-made tradition, that's sinning. Okay. Still forgiven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've been there. Okay, they read their scriptures. Jesus said, you search for life in those scriptures, but you won't even come to me to have life. I don't know who those scriptures are talking about. <laughs> Did the early church have quiet time? Did they have scriptures? They had scriptures, but they didn't have the Bible. The Bible wasn't canonized for three, four hundred years after that. So they were lucky to have a single letter amongst themselves to be read to somebody else. They had a lot of stuff from the Torah, but when they read the Torah... They were reading it based on what Christ accomplished. So they didn't read their Bible because they didn't have a Bible. Most of them were illiterate. <laughs> See what I'm doing here? I'm, I'm helping you understand your freedom. So you don't go to a building, you don't read the Bible, and you don't have a quiet time either in order to maintain your salvation. They wouldn't know what a quiet time is. <laughs> Maybe. I'm sure when that that those two words started being used it was being just stop it mcmillan just stop it <laughs> uh, i'm not gonna say that <laughs> so those things do not maintain your salvation okay so once saved always saved is still true whether you never step foot in a church building whether you never read another word in the bible or whether you never have a quiet time some people just, just not built for quiet times. <laughs> they like loud times. <laughs> they like nature times. You know, why would I superimpo superimpose my personality onto you? Because I enjoy going to bed early, getting up early, spending a, a few hours doing what I do. Why would I say, you need to do this. You got to be like me. That's not fair. You don't have my same personality. If you want to have your quiet time, have it. But quiet time does not maintain your salvation. Okay? I know. You go to the box church. Oh, you got to do this. If, are you, are you, you just can't give God that much time. After all he did for you. Oh, and then here we go. We got the good old fashioned Christian guilt trying to get you to turn off Netflix and get out of bed. <laughs> you know, if you're going to turn off Netflix and get out of bed, and you're doing it because you're attempting to earn your salvation, maintain your salvation. You're sinning. <laughs> if I was doing this walk talk, I'm like, I got to do this walk talk. This is something that I do. And people, blah, 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 blah. I would be sinning. Okay. But again, <laughs> I'm still forgiven. But I don't have to do this. I don't have to do anything. I could just shut down all my social media accounts. Don't do anything else. Anything. Any, just play golf and... You know, travel and play with my dogs. <laughs> I'd be fine. Now I'd be lukewarm. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about that here um, in just a moment. Matter of fact, let's just go to that one because that's number three. The third lie about once saved, always saved. If you're a lukewarm Christian, God will spit you out of his mouth. You're not saved any longer. You're one of them lukewarms. You know, they even they <laughs> put a little tagline on it. Recently, I see on social media, they they call us lukewarms or us or whoever. So they'll say, oh, those are the, those are those lukewarms. Okay. <laughs> What's interesting is this is from Revelation 3, 15 and 16. It says nothing about salvation. So what's it about? Purposefulness. Jesus says deeds. What are you doing? Okay, so this is difficult for people to understand when they grow up in a very legalistic community. 
because they confuse what they're doing with their salvation. <laughs> okay, they're not the same. Your salvation, I'm going to get to what your salvation is here at the very end. It's good news. But then you got your deeds. You got the stuff you're doing. Okay, they're separate. You got to separate your who from your do. <laughs> A great divorce has to happen in your mind. No matter what I do, my salvation is complete. So why do I do stuff? So you can have purposefulness. Okay, Jesus is saying, I know your deeds. Okay, not your salvation. Now, are you in Jesus' mouth? <laughs> No, you're not. You're in him. He's in you. So if we're going to compare being in Jesus's mouth to your salvation, that would be weird because if he spit you out, he'd have to slurp you back up, spit you out, slurp you back up. Every time you did something good, every time you did something bad, every time, do you see what I'm saying? So this is Jesus saying, it tastes really good to me when you have purposeful deeds, purposeful deeds. Now, how can I say, oh, that, where are you getting purposeful from? Now, hold on. Hang on. <laughs> okay. Because purposefulness is the connotation he is getting to. Now, here's why. He says, I wish you were hot or cold. This is Jesus saying, I wish you were hot. Now, most, most pulpits will stop right there. You got to be on fire for the Lord. You got to be hot. If you're not hot, he'll spit you out. You're on fire for the Lord. They used to be on fire for the Lord. They, they were coming to church, doing missions. They were in charge of the youth group. They were doing all these wonderful things. And now they're back in the world. They're not on fire for the Lord anymore. He says you can be cold too. <laughs> and you're describing hot is not actually hot. It could be sinning <laughs> if it's not done of faith. I know this is wild. <laughs> okay, he says, I wish you were hot or cold. Now, here's a perfect example of this. Let's say I'm doing this walk talk and it is the middle of January and it's cold. I go back to the house and I get myself a lukewarm cup of hot cocoa or a lukewarm cup of cocoa. <laughs> sit down lukewarm cup of cocoa that'd be gross doesn't serve any purpose doesn't warm me up but if it's hot oh so good got the little marshmallows in there purposefulness okay and then you got cold <laughs> oh how can you be cold for the lord what do you mean See, we got to we got we think that purposefulness is you running around like a carpenter bee <laughs> or zapping around like a carpenter bee out of your mind. <laughs> it's not. Could be cold too. Okay? So here's cold. Let's say it is the middle of August. It's 105 degrees out here. I do this walk talk and I go back to the house and I jump in my lukewarm swimming pool. Think it would cool me off? No, I'd be, I'd be bleh. Wouldn't want to do that. I want it cold. <laughs> I want it to be purposeful. I want it to cool me off. Hot serves a purpose. Cold serves a purpose. Lukewarm serves no purpose. This is not about your salvation. There are countless Christians right now who are living lukewarm lives. I'm not, not trying to condemn you anyway, but you're still saved. Salvation's still secure. But your purposefulness, you know, and I'm not trying to make you feel bad if you're not able to do anything. You know, God understands. But if you have all of the resources and time to do something as minute as mustard seed like, <laughs> it's purposeful. Imagine if Michael Jordan grew up, didn't go to the University of North Carolina, didn't play for the Bulls, 
didn't do anything that he did. And he just went to his local IGA and he just what bagged groceries. He has so much talent. And I'm going to get to the parable of talent. So stay with me because that's not about salvation either. <laughs> but it, he just, he didn't do anything with it. Now I'm not, again, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm saying you're still saved no matter what you do, but you have been created for good works. God wants to bear the fruit of the spirit through your actions and attitudes, through your identity, through your personality. There will never be anybody else who ever lives again like you. That's a good thing. <laughs> Okay, so this is not about your salvation. It's about purposefulness, you know, and, you know, doesn't mean you got to be on any type of schedule. It just means how can I wake up every day and express Christ and be myself? That's it. Okay. Um, all right. So the, let's go on to number four, the fourth lie about once saved, always saved. My neighborhood's super busy today. There's a golf tournament going on. There's people walking up and down the road, got dogs barking at me. So, <laughs> so if you guys are hearing all that, that's what it is. Um, but still doing my walk talk. <laughs> all right, so the fourth lie about once saved, always saved. Hold on a second, my screen is froze here. All right, now we're back, okay. What is the fourth lie? Uh, okay, the fourth lie about once saved, always saved. People who sin less than you or not as bad stay saved. So this is the fourth lie about once saved, always saved. People who sin less than you or not as bad stay saved. Okay, here's what I want you to do for this one. I want you, and we all have this person in our lives or have had this person in our life. I want you to think of the one person who you believe is staying saved because of their less sinning. You might not think that, but if you do, think of that one person. Now, when I did think that, it was my grandma. <laughs> okay, so I know now that my grandma, she was not staying saved through less sinning or doing good stuff. <laughs> okay. So I want you to think of that person, whoever that person is that you believe is staying saved because they sin less than you or not as bad. Think of them. Okay. Got them in your mind. All right. Now, now that you have them in their mind, I want you to know this. If they sin once and the gospel was not true, they would lose their salvation. Just once. If they sinned one time and the gospel was not true, death. Because remember, the wages of sin is death. All right, now, there are some people, might be new to my ministry, you might be thinking, oh no, we're not talking about salvation, we're talking about rewards. Your grandma, all the good stuff she did, just imagine when she got to heaven, all the great rewards that God had for her just lined up. They would have to haul in all the rewards on a tandem truck and just pour them at her feet. She just earned so much. It's not true. Grandma, even though she raised us, did what she did, lived an amazing life, you know, was sinned very little. <laughs> She will receive, she has received, because she passed away in December of 2018. She received the same thing that I have already received. That you have already received. Did you know the word rewards? Plural? With an S? It's not in the Bible. There is no rewards. Uh, trust me, I get it. <laughs> Do you think grace ends in heaven? <laughs> it does not end in heaven. Grace explodes in ways you cannot fathom. That is ultimately what you have to deal with when you die. Something that your human mind, it's not even entered that. So thinking that you're going to receive some rewards 
plural, but not lose your salvation, that's man-made tradition. Okay, here's, here's what I mean when I say you have already received everything that grandma has received. I have already received everything that grandma has received or anybody who has ever trusted in him for salvation. Here it is. <laughs> Colossians 3, 24. The reward of the inheritance. It just doesn't make sense because the box church doesn't teach this. <laughs> the reward of the inheritance. So how would I receive an inheritance or you anybody how would you receive an actual inheritance the answer is somebody dies okay <laughs> so we have received the reward of the inheritance because Jesus died okay so you got the reward of the inheritance from Jesus dying you are not receiving more rewards when you die, you already have everything that's Christ. What is Christ's is yours. Now, not later. So we don't need to worry about our salvation. <laughs> we also don't need to worry about what we're going to get. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to have the biggest mansion, mom. No. <laughs> You're thinking in human terms of an actual physical mansion. <laughs> Okay, you don't receive rewards. You have already received the reward of the inheritance. If this were not true, I, I, I'm, I'm going to outwork you. <laughs> okay, because I'm going to get paid big. <laughs> and then we're right back to effort. We're right back to comparing and contrasting. Do you see it? We're the same. <laughs> we both have the same salvation. We both have the same reward of the inheritance. Okay, I'm peeling back all of this traditional man-made error you might have been taught. Or no, you gotta, well, what's the whole point of behaving? Because that sets right with you as a saint. Yeah, but if I'm not going to get paid, why do it? Because it's, you should do that because that's who you are. So we don't need to do a tit for tat. What's the word? Quid pro quo or whatever? <laughs> it's not how it works with God. So you have to come to the understanding that people who sin less than you or not, air quote, as bad. Remember, every death, every sin deserves death. They've got their salvation. If they've trusted in Jesus, you got your salvation if you've trusted in Jesus. All right, let's go on to the last lie. And then I got a bonus lie. <laughs> Lie number five about once saved, always saved. The book of Revelation says God will blot you out of the book of life. So once saved, always saved is not true. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says I will never blot you out. Never. Now, you've been taught differently. If you think differently, go read it. It's in Revelation 3 as well. It says, I will never blot out their name. Okay. It's a comforting passage. It's not a scary passage. So you don't ever have to think that your name will be blotted out. Because it won't. Also, again, this is Revelation, so this is not literal. <laughs> There's no book. <laughs> Just think how big that book would be. <laughs> Again, you're thinking in human terms. There's no book. Oh, shoot. The dog got out of the yard up there. Now they're messing with the person who's walking. Um, crazy day in the neighborhood today. <laughs> you know, if God was going to blot you out of the book of life, he would have to remember your sins. That, that would be the only reason why. But Hebrews 8 chapter 12, or Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12 says he no longer remembers your sins. Now he's not some forgetful old man. Oh, where'd his sins go? No, he is choosing to remember your sins no more because again, death would be required. Jesus won't die again. So he's choosing to not remember your sins. So if he was going to blot you out, therefore you lose your salvation. 
He would be remembering what he said, I will not remember. If God was going to blot you out of the book of life, he would have to hold your sins against you. Every sin. But 2 Corinthians 5.19 says, he no longer holds your sins against you. You got to deal with that. So when you sin less, you, you're still forgiven, still righteous, still got your salvation, still got your full reward. So you're, you're going to have to figure out some other reason to mature out of any particular sinful action or attitude rather than think you're losing your salvation or you're losing, losing more rewards. <laughs> so what's the truth about once saved, always saved? Oh, the bonus lie. Can't, can't forget that one. <laughs> I got a bonus lie for you guys here. Here's your bonus lie about once saved, always saved. Second Peter two says it would be better for them to have never known and turn their back. It would be better of them to have not known and then not turn their back than to have known and turn their back. So this is a cornerstone passage that many people will go to. No, if you heard about the Lord and you turn your back on him, you have lost your salvation. There, it's it's going to be even worse for you. Second Peter chapter two. Well, <laughs> this wasn't writ written in just one chapter or just one verse. Start up at the beginning, read all the way down, and you will see this is describing unbelievers, false teachers, people who heard all about Jesus, but said, no, I'm going to teach the opposite. That's not you. Peter even says, a dog returns to his vomit, a pig to the mud. You're not a dog. You're not a pig. And this is also how the Jews described unbelievers. Peter was a Jew. <laughs> Do you see it? And if you continue in the next chapter, even though this was not written in chapters, <laughs> chapters were added in the 16th, 13th century for easy referencing, verses in the 16th century for easy referencing, the very next chapter, he continues to describe the unbelievers, calls them scoffers. That's also what they called an unbeliever according to the law. It's not you. <laughs> this is people who heard about Jesus, said, no, nope, turned their back on Jesus, and then taught the opposite. All right. So what is the truth about once saved, always saved? My good friend, Mark Baker, has an awesome quote, which I love, <laughs> about once saved, always saved. Once alive, always alive. I love that. That, that, that describes it perfectly. Because I haven't even told you how you're saved. <laughs> I wanted to save this for the end. I wanted you to think about all your behavior. I want to think about all your good stuff, all your bad stuff that you're doing and not doing. But then at the end, I want to remind you how you receive salvation. It is life. Once saved, always saved. Once alive, always alive. I'm alive right now. What are you talking about, McMillan? I can breathe. I can, my heart's beating. I'm talking about your physical life. <laughs> Talk about your spiritual life. The supernatural you inside of you. You were born without the life of Christ. In the garden, humanity lost life. Adam and Eve were never going to die. And when they wanted the knowledge of good and evil, legalistic knowledge, which that's the temptation of the box church today, right from wrong. You'll know right from wrong and then you'll be like God. They already were like God. They were created in his image. Me and you, we were not. We would look like God if he was created clearly because look at Jesus. But supernaturally, we were born in Adam, according to Romans chapter five, by no fault of your own, he says. But in the same way, you receive life, the free gift. So you lost life in the garden, but through Christ, you receive life. When you receive life, you receive salvation. This is why Jesus said, I have come so that you can have life. 
And they would have said, we're alive. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's talking about spiritual life, supernatural life, the life lost because of Adam no longer believing God about his perfection. We see this on this side of the cross. You tell somebody, no, you're perfect. They're like, nobody's perfect. But then they confuse what they do with who they are. And then, yeah, if you're going to do that, you're not perfect. But you are not what you do. You are who you are by your supernatural rebirth into the family of God or lack thereof. I know this is heavy. <laughs> But once you receive the life of Christ, your old, sinful, unregenerate spirit is crucified on the cross with Jesus, buried in the tomb with Jesus, and then resurrected as a brand new creation, and then fully united with the life of Christ. Galatians chapter 2.20. Colossians 2.20. Romans chapter 6. You're new. You have the life of Christ. Romans chapter 6, verse 9 says, Since Christ has been resurrected, we know he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. So if he has been resurrected and you're in him, 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says you're one spirit with the Lord. Colossians 3, 3 says you, are, you have died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God, your old, sinful, unregenerate spirit. So if you have been united with the Lord, you have his spirit, he will never die again. Your salvation is the life of Christ. You can't lose the life of Christ because Christ will never die again. Romans 5, 10 says we are saved by his life. You are saved by the life of Christ. Not by your good works, not by your bad works, not by your sinning, not by your bad sin, your not so bad sin, but you're saved by the life of Christ. So let me ask you, will Jesus ever die again? No. <laughs> Hebrews 7.25 says, He is able to save completely because he always lives. He's able to save you. Completely, because he always lives. And some people just, they still can't fathom this. And they want to say, oh, what about the parable of the talents? You got God coming back and rewarding people according to what they've done. So you're going to get paid and then you're going to go to hell. Well, here's the thing with Matthew 25, that is not describing you. <laughs> That's describing those who are looking to the law for righteousness. It's a crapshoot. Jesus is saying, are you sure? <laughs> Which one are you? Here's how we know that it's not describing you. Be because he calls them servants. Wicked and lazy servant. Jesus doesn't call us servants. Matthew, excuse me, John chapter 15, he calls you friend. <laughs> I no longer call you servants, <laughs> but friends. You know, if you want to see, just to touch on rewards again, if you want to see how you're going to get, get paid, air quotes, in the next life, look at Matthew chapter 20. The parable of the vineyard workers. They all lined up at the end of the day after working different times of the day, and the vineyard owner was generous, and guess what? They all got paid the same. <laughs> And that's just rewards. But you're not a servant. You're even much better than a hired worker. You are a son. You are a daughter. And you are saved by the life of Christ. He will never die again. Therefore, once saved, always saved is 100% true. If once saved, always saved wasn't true, he would have to hold your sins against you. But he says he won't. Hebrews chapter 8. If once saved, always saved wasn't true, he would have to condemn you for your sins. But Hebrews, excuse me, Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says he won't do that. <laughs> he would have to take back the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, you can give back a free gift, McMillan. What are you talking? You could. <laughs> That's why Jesus said you must be born again. You can't give back birth. 
Don't be surprised when I say you must be born again, Nicodemus. Well, I don't understand that. He's talking about your supernatural rebirth into the family of God. Birth is final. If I'm not getting along with my daughter, Grace, and she disowns me, I'm not Matt's daughter. What are you talking about? Never talks to me again. Has nothing to do with me again. Hates me. Talks bad about me. Says I don't even know that. Everybody would still say that your dad. <laughs> You're born. She can't give it back. Same with you and God. You've been born. You can't give it back. Birth is final. Crucified, buried, resurrected, reborn as a whole new creation, fully united with the Lord. You can't get away from it. <laughs> you can't outrun your salvation. You can't outsend your salvation. You can't do enough good works to maintain your salvation. Your salvation is safe and secure because you are alive. Once alive, always alive. Thank you, Mark. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, I've done so much about Once Saved, Always Saved. Go to my website, search the topics page. You can also check out my books, other podcast episodes, and stuff on YouTube. So, all right, guys. So I hope this has encouraged you today. I hope it's brought to light some truth and some lies. But you should always tell the truth about yourself. What's the truth? You're righteous. You're holy. You're blameless. You're a new creation. You're a child of God. There's nothing wrong with you and you are awesome. So always tell the truth about yourself. Always be yourself. Love y'all.